Hey everyone, let's get started with Playwright using the VS Code extension. Now over here, when clicking on the extensions, we can search for Playwright. And make sure you choose the one by Microsoft, and then we can go ahead and install the extension. So once we have the extension installed, you can see it, there's no files, nothing is there. So I've just got an extension, now I need to use it. So now I need to install Playwright. So I can do that with the help of the extension, and I can just open the command panel and then just write install Playwright, uh, or just select it from here, I've already used it before. So there we go, test install Playwright. This will now ask me which browsers I want to install, Chromium, Firefox, WebKit. I can choose all of them, or maybe I only want to install the Chromium browser, up to you. Um, I prefer to use TypeScript and we highly recommend that. Um, so, but if you don't want to, you can always select use JavaScript. And then we have the add GitHub Actions workflow. This is really, really cool because it will add a workflow for GitHub. But if you're not using that, feel free to uncheck it. Let's go ahead and just select the defaults and press OK. And you'll see now um, over here, we are installing all the browsers and you can see my files just being um, created there for me. So my project has just been initialized and let's take a quick look at what we have. We have the .github folder with a Playwright YAML workflow. In here, it's basically called Playwright Tests and on the push or pull request of your branches, it's gonna go ahead and run those tests. Straight out of the box, very, very easy setup for you. You just select that button and bang, it's done. So that's really cool. Obviously your node modules folder, and then, uh, and you can see in here what we got, Playwright, Playwright Core, et cetera. Uh, we've got a tests folder with an example, spec.ts. So in here we have a example test that we can play around with. And then we also have a bigger example that we can play around with, which is the demo to do app test, uh, which you can dive deep into and check that out. And then I have a package lock.json, package.json. Let's have a look at in here. We've got Playwright test and types for node. And then we have our Playwright config. Our config is where everything um, is configurable. We can change things that we want to. For example, the test directory is called tests as we see here. So you could change that if you already had a test directory. Um, fully parallel is true. So run tests and files in parallel um, for the build and CI, retries, uh, workers, um, all this can be changed. The report to the HTML report is included by default. So you got a nice report when your tests are passing or failing. And um, using the trace on first retries, we're gonna create a trace viewer on the first retry, but you could go ahead and change that to always on if you wanted to. And then you've got your projects. We installed Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Here in the config, we call this projects. So these are your browsers, but they're projects because you could have different projects like setup projects, or you know we have uh, mobile viewports as well that you could go ahead and um, uncomment this and you could then test out your application on mobile viewports. So that's really cool. That's all in the config. And then down below here, you could uncheck this if you wanted to run a web server locally and then just have it spin up a localhost 3000 as you're running your tests. So that's the config, very, very cool. Now let's go ahead and see Playwright in action. So the first thing we can do is um, let's go ahead and run a test. So you'll see now that I've installed the Playwright extension. I've got this nice testing toolbar here. I can click on this and now I've got the tests and you can see that I have um, the tests, the example one that we looked at in a, a few minutes ago. Um, there's the test we have, and we can go ahead and run the test from here. So you just click this button here to just go ahead and run the tests. And you can see I have a test um, results section over here, and that's basically showing me the tests have passed. Um, and I can go ahead and I can run it from either here or from the actual uh, sidebar here. Now I have another browser window open. So let's go ahead and just make this a little smaller over here. So you can see exactly what's going on on my other screen. I'll pull this across. There's a little browser just popped up with the actual test results. Let me just show you as I run this test again. Uh, you'll see that that browser is opening up. Why is that happening? How is that happening? Um, this is because down here you'll have, let's bring this a little higher, you have um, show browser checked. So if I've got show browser unchecked and I close that, the browser's gone. Now when I go and run that test, it's in headless mode, just like you would on a CI environment. You have no UI, you cannot see what's happening, but you can just check the results down here in the test results section. So maybe that's a flow that you wanna use because you don't need to actually see the browser 
open. But if you do want to see the browser open, just click on that, go ahead and run your test, and it will pop up that browser for you. Now, Playwright is very, very fast. And let me show you with another example. If uh, we go ahead and take this demo to do app and just drag and drop it into the test folder. So now we have another test in our folder. So this is my example here. And if I go ahead and let's take this test here and we'll just run that first test there. It's gonna open up that to do app and it's gonna start doing it. That was really quick. There's already two things in there. Let's go ahead and just run it again so you can really see and did it super fast, right? So as you are playing around with this, you might decide, you know what, this browser, Playwright just does things too fast. I can't keep track of it. Well, you have another option, which is the show trace viewer. So you can click the show trace viewer instead. And now when I go ahead and run that test, now I have a full trace. This is really cool. Let me zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. This is a full trace of the test that we just ran. Over here, you have actions. You can buy some cheese. You can see it's uh, the fill, get by placeholders there. And uh, then when you press enter, the buy some cheese is filled in. You've got the action before, after. So we could look at, you know, what happened here, after, before, and see the difference uh, in how your page state changed, uh, what you're expecting. And you can see down here the actual co um, source code as you're going along. But you've also got other things down here, like a locator, when I can actually go ahead and pick a locator here. And you can see now that there's a get by test ID here, uh, but I might want to choose a different one. And uh, you can go along and just start choosing different locators there. And you can see the area snapshot in case you're doing um, snapshot testing. You've got the area snapshot here as well. And you can then just go ahead and copy that into your code and modify your test, etc. Now you've also got the call. You're expecting it to be empty, the time, the parameters, um, the return value. Uh, you've also got the log, so what happened, the errors, if there were any, we have no errors because we were at perfect tests. Uh, you've got the console, which also could give console logs from your test or from the browser. Then you've got your network, which you can filter and change and have a look at the different things um, and, and type in here, just look at the base CSS, see what, what's going on at each point. You can also select a specific area in time and scroll along there and then see when are those network requests coming in? So they're probably coming in a little bit earlier um, and you can focus on different points and see how here the actions is changing as I'm selecting different parts of my test to focus on. So that's also uh, very cool there as well. Um, so that was network, you've also got source, that's a source code. And then if you had any attachments, they would be shown here. Another thing you can also do is click on this button here and you will pop that out into an actual DOM snapshot. We can just go ahead and inspect it and you could like totally uh, come along here and play with things and remove the box shadow, um, change the, te the, 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 the styles. Um, I don't know, let's do red, for example, and really kind of like play around with things um, and just kind of like see it, but this is like you testing and, you know, debugging. So really, really good tool for debugging and for checking out your test. And you've got some settings there. You could also put it in dark mode or display a canvas content if you needed that. So that's pretty cool. That's the trace viewer and that's the uh, option here. So a couple of other things that uh, I want to point out, we have our projects. Remember that we called like our browsers, um, in our config were projects and we've got Chromium fire kit. Firefox and WebKit. So again, if we look at our Playwright config file here, um, you will see that they are the ones we have. So if we were to, let's have a look at this one. Let's uncomment this one out. And now we should get another option in our projects. Yes, we get mobile Chrome here. And again, we can call this what we want. So mobile Chrome, uh, we could call it mobile everything. I don't know, just, just to see that the, the change here, you can see that this has come up, okay? So that's how you would modify those. Uh, and then you could decide to run all of those tests. Let's just click on show browser just for a second. And let's just do the simple example test. Um, really, really easy here. And you'll see now this will go ahead and test those on all those browsers. And you'll see all those browsers are going to uh, pop up and check them out. Firefox has just appeared there on the other window. I pull it across. WebKit uh, has just appeared there and the mobile one has just appeared. So there is a nice way of just testing across the different browsers very, very quickly. And um, let me go ahead and close all those browsers. You could just actually click on this button as well. If we go ahead and run that, let me do that again with this test here. So if you're checking across, across the different browsers and all these browser windows pops up, 
um, you can go along and um, just close the browsers here. Nice, quick and easy way. Uh, Reveal test iPad is basically what uh, we have showing here. Let me just pull this up into full screen mode. So we have our test results area here. We can also run our tests from here. So if we wanted to run only on Firefox here. I could do it um, over here. If I check down here, I can run it from here, but I can also run it over here. So there we go. That's running it just on Firefox. Um, again, that's popped up another window because I have it there. I can close all browsers. And if I went ahead and closed this and then I realized I actually want to see what's going on, I can just click on that button, reveal the test output. So that's kind of really cool here. And I could go back through the other results and see what was going on um, at each point in time and what happened. Now there's a little playwright section here. What's this about? This is my locator picker. So remember we talked about the locator picker in the trace viewer, but we can also pick the locator um, from here or from this box here. Um, let's run a test to do it. So let's go ahead and let's just uncheck these. So we just have Chromium working just so we can work on one thing. And let's click on um, this one here. Let's do on the to dem demo to do app actually. Let's go and click uh, the editing. Let's take that one. So let me make this a little bit smaller and we'll pull this across. So here's the test that just ran. And I can go ahead and like I showed you, I can click on the pick locator button. And now as I hover over here, it's going to highlight all the locators, get by text, get by text. We've got the get by role heading name to do's. We've got this get by text mark all as complete. Maybe that's the one that I wanted um, to do. And then I can go ahead and I can copy. I can also select copy on pick. Um, and I can just take this, maybe I want this locator or maybe I want the area one, depending on what I want to do in my test, what I want to modify and change, etc. This is really great for debugging. So if I go back um, to here, let's go back along and modify one of my tests. So let's make this, give me more space. Here we go. And let's see, this is the one we're working on. So let's click on this test here. telling me that if I've changed that, I, I need to actually update the test. But I just wanted to make this test fail. So let's go ahead and uh, again, we'll see over here, we've got our sparkly icon here, which I could go ahead and click there. And um, it's going to help go ahead and fix that error for me. So this issue is in the could should save edits on blur test. It expects by some sausages, but actually gets by some cheese twice. The problem is the test is setting a new text, but checking for incorrect values. Now, again, um, AI might change things in the way you want it to or the way you don't, um, because it's decided that if I want cheese, it's going to put cheese everywhere. Obviously, it's not going to bring the sausages back. So, but again, that's a really uh, good way because my test is now um, going to pass and that's what I care about. So really good way of just uh, fixing things with AI again. Um, over here, you've got that sparkly icon button. It's not going to appear unless you break a test. So here, um, let's just make that a little bigger. You can try and look for this button and it is not there. So until I go back and say, I don't know, ice cream, get buy some ice cream and then let's go run that test. That test is going to fail and this button is going to change in a second. It's going to appear that I'm going to have the um, fix with AI. So there is that fix it AI icon. I can click on that and it will go ahead and fix it. Um, great. So again, that's a, a really good way. And you all obviously you're in VS Code, so you can choose the model that you wanted to. So you could choose uh, 4.1 if you wanted to. Make sure that you're choosing models that are included um, and you can stop it and um, change, cancel, et cetera. Um, so that's really cool. Okay, let's go ahead and set, accept those changes because I definitely prefer ice cream to cheese. And uh, our test will now pass. Fantastic. Um, again, our browser window is open. We've got our ice cream here. We've also got cheese there. And again, we can pick our locator. We can come along here, hover over things, pick our locator. And uh, and then we'll make sure that, you know, this is, yeah, this is the one we want. Get by text. Uh, buy some ice cream. Okay. Um, we might want to change things and improve things and create new tests. And we can do that by clicking on the record new button. Let's go ahead and click that. And that will open up 
um, it will create a file for us called a test1.spec.ts. It's already done the import and it's um, created the test name and it's ready to record. You can see Playwright Code Gen is recording. So I can go over here. Now, the only thing is I don't have anything uh, set up here. So I've got to actually put in the URL that I want to do each time. Now, I don't have my demo to do app open. So if I wanted to, I could go along um, to that test and copy that URL. Just uh, I could put in any URL, but I'm just going to copy in this URL here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go back and open that file. So we'll make sure we can see what's going on. And let's paste that in here. And you can see that the first thing that it's done is it's generated a wait page go to um, the URL. So let's go along in here and let's say buy some ice cream. There we go. And let's buy some chocolate as well. So now you can see it's generated the uh, text box, what needs to be done, fill, buy some ice cream, enter, uh, buy some cheese, no, buy some chocolate, I buy some chocolate. And then we can click on the um, selected, we've already bought some ice cream. And again, we can do some assertions and we can assert that uh, buy some chocolate is visible. We can assert that this is visible. And then if we can you know, delete something and then we can just make sure that buy some chocolate is visible. We could also do some other um, assertions here as well. So um, there's also the area snapshot that we could go ahead and click on this one here. And let's go ahead and cancel that. We've seen we've got this great test that's just been written. There's our to match area snapshot as well. So this is fantastic. Let's go ahead and run that test and let's see if it passed. Now that browser window is open and that was really, really fast. Let's see if I can uh, make this um, viewable for you so you can see uh, what's going on um, as it runs through it in a very fast manner. And I need more space here. There we go. Okay, um, where's my to-do test? There we go. Are you ready? Watch this, everyone. So super fast. Da -da -da -bum. Right, that's the beauty of Playwright. It's just too fast. Um, so again, that's really cool. We can go ahead and um, close our browsers or um, run that test using the um, trace viewer and see. And there you go, there's our test. Let's just zoom in there. And uh, let's go ahead and just go through all our actions, see what's going on. There's our ice cream, our enter, and uh, we can you know, make this smaller, give some more space to this area, et cetera. And, uh, you know, filter through as we want or go over the timeline. So lots of really cool things you can do with the VS Code extension. So another thing I can do is I can record it, Chris. So let's go ahead and just um, make sure our browser is open instead of our trace viewer. And I can go ahead and let's put the cursor here. But let's go ahead and run the test first. So we go ahead and run the test. What that does is it's going to bring up that test over here and then we can go back. Let's just close this and let's record at cursor. The cursor is here and I want to go ahead here and then I can basically go along and click on the active, uh, click on the completed and I could, um, you know, assert that uh, that's there. And this has added this in now into this part of the test. And I could go ahead and then, you know, run that test and follow along as it does what it does and uh, make sure that all those um, are doing as they should. Now, this is all going to fail because I, I created tests in the middle of the test, but I could go ahead and then, you know, use my AI to go ahead and fix that and uh, improve my, my tests um, as I go along. So again, VS Code extension, really, really cool, uh, really good way of getting um, your tests up and running and just really playing around with things and seeing things in action. So have fun with the VS Code extension. Make sure you're generating tests, writing tests, editing tests, playing with tests, um, picking locators, it's all there. And there's update snapshots um, there for you. Run global setup on each one. Um, etc. So check that out. VS Code extension for Playwright. Thanks, everyone. Have fun. See you in the next video.